Morning, Zoomers. Morning. Welcome. I hope you're as blessed as uh, we are this morning. Um, you always do it with that last song to me, don't you? <laughs> oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We worship you, Father. Yeah. Right, John chapter 4, verses 10 to 20 uh, this week. <clears throat> I think you might probably know this uh, this. Uh, this chapter somewhat now, but uh, hopefully um, it will bring home a little bit more of what Paul's going to say this morning on the living water. Jesus replied to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. She said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you, who gave us the well and drank it of himself and his sons and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never be thirsty. But the water that I will give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, <clears throat> Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty, nor come all the way here to draw water. He said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered and, uh, and said to him, I have no husband. Jesus said, you have correctly said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. This which you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and yet you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one must worship. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Right, well, I finished off last week with a declaration. Can you remember what a declaration was? No. Well, <laughs> Jesus is the vaccine for the virus called the sinful nature. Ready? Let's try that again. Mm. Jesus is the vaccine for the virus called the sinful nature. And we talked about how the reality of having a sinful nature has robbed us of the privilege of being uh, connected to God. And so we all start off this life disconnected from God. But God, in Jesus, has given us access to him. And so we can find that reconnection with God because of Jesus. When the virus first came to our land, the Lord gave me a vision and he showed me a pebble. And the virus was a pebble that had been thrown into a steel pond that sent out ripples. And the Lord said to me, at that time, the pebble creating the ripples is going to not be as bad as the ripples themselves. And so what's coming as a result of the virus is going to be worse than the virus itself. And that was obviously quite troubling because the implications of the damage the virus does to humanity is a terrible thing. And we're seeing that actually in many ways. But what about a vision of a rock being thrown into the same pool that the virus had stirred the ripples? And the rock that came into the pool disturbed the ripples of the, the pebble that created the, the uh, ripples in the first place. And the Lord said to me and to Robert at that time that Jesus is the rock that has been thrown into that pool that's going to supersede the damage done via the virus. Yeah. Jesus is the rock that's going to supersede the COVID ripples. 
so that the implications of what he does when he gets thrown into the pond is greater than the ripples of the virus that was planning to bring devastation even more than it has to humanity. So the rock of salvation is Jesus. Who is it? Jesus, Jesus is the rock of salvation. And he is the one that's going to bring our saving in humanity. He did way back 2,000 years ago and he's still our rock today. So Jesus presents this declaration to the woman regarding the gift of God. And he says, in effect, he says, do you know, woman, the gift of God? Now, she didn't know the gift of God. Have you received the gift of God? Well, she hadn't yet received the gift of God. But I wonder today, brothers and sisters, have you received the gift of God yourself? And as a Christian, are you offering this gift of God to others who live in your world? Are you proactive in offering this gift of God to others who live in your world? You see, this story is all about Jesus meeting a woman in an ordinary situation on an ordinary day, which is the reality of most of our lives. And God wants us, as ordinary people, to be the manifestation of an extraordinary message. And this message is Jesus is the rock of salvation. Jesus is the gift of God. Jesus is trying to speak to this woman spiritually, but all she wants to do, all she wants to do is connect to him in the natural. Now, Debbie and I was out for a walk nice and early yesterday morning. We walked around Paul Park. And while we were walking with a dog, he was going crazy because of all the excitement that he was experiencing regarding all of these new people that he was about to meet. This she was about to meet. Um, sorry, it's a girl. And she was running around everywhere doing what dogs do. She had a puppy, one year old. And uh, she is a COVID puppy. So she's been, uh, as it were, she hasn't been able to get out. And she's been, she was running around and eventually we was walking along and this guy, because I was wearing my Tottenham uh, shirt on, and he, he, said, he said to me, um, he said something about the Spurs thing. And we got engaged in the conversation and his daughter and his wife were sitting on the bench and he was there talking to me. And we engaged in conversation for about 15, 20 minutes. And Debbie was chatting with the two ladies and I was chatting to the guy. And the guy was telling me the story, he had COVID and he nearly died. And I challenged him, I said to him, when you was about to face death and you knew you was passing through, what happened? He began to tell me, he said to me, it's a long story, but he said to me that he began to see everything flash before him and all the, the normal stories that we hear about. And I said to him, did you think about what was beyond death? And he said, no, I was just struggling for life. And I said, now you've returned and you're all right again, you've recovered from COVID, now you've returned. I said, have you thought about beyond death? And he said, no. And then he was talking to me again about COVID. And it was like every time I tried to communicate to him about the revelation of the rock and talk to him about the gift of life, all he wanted to do was talk about COVID. All he wanted to do was talk about his sickness. He wanted to tell me, he started to tell me all the details about how, to, how the, the, the illness begins to destroy the, the innermost being of who you are in terms of your... your, your um, organs and uh, I didn't want to talk about his organs <laughs> I didn't want to talk about his phlegm I wanted to talk about Jesus the rock and all he did was just kept bringing me back and it was just like this world or this day Jesus was trying to talk to her and giving her spiritual reality but all she wanted to do was talk in the natural now in the 80s 1980s We'd, we'd learned a theme, it was called the Engels Scale. And it was about a scale where you connect to people and everyone on that scale, everyone you connect to, is somewhere on that scale from one to 10 in regards to being close to God or being, uh, being far away from God to being close to God. And depending on where, where they were, determine where they are on that scale. And we, tried to, we were taught to try and identify where a person was on that scale. And the reality of that connection enabled you to talk to them where they were at. 
And so we learn to communicate to people according to where they were at. But here this woman, all she wants to do is just talk in the natural. She just wants to talk in the ordinary. She doesn't want to talk about the rock. She doesn't want to talk about salvation. Jesus is saying to this woman, Woman, I am the gift of God. I am, that's his name, ego, I am me. I am, I am, he's saying to you right now, right now, this gift of God is being offered to you today. Just like that man I was talking to yesterday. I was trying to get him to get hold of the reality of the truth regarding the gift of God. But he didn't want to connect at that level. Brothers and sisters, we need to learn to be able to connect to people where they are and bring them on into the place where God wants them to be. So, Jesus, some, someone's uh, unmuted. Could you mute yourself? Thank you. So, Jesus is trying to get this woman to communicate a, a message, uh, get this woman to understand a message, what the living water that he's offering her is. This is the water that brings dead things back to life. This is the water that brings spiritual food that recovers relationship with God and sustains relationship with God. Jesus is trying to offer her this spiritual revelation, this spiritual food. In 2 Kings, two Kings 2, 19, 20, it says this, it says, the people of the city said to Elisha, look our Lord, this town is well situated, as you can see, but the water is bad and the land is unproductive. And that's what happens when the innermost flow of who we are is bad, we are unproductive. Bring me a new bowl, he said, and put salt in it. So they brought him. Then he went out to the spring and threw the salt into the pond, saying, This is what the Lord says. I have healed this water. And that's what God is wanting to do for this woman. He's wanting to give her the living water, the rock, the spiritual food that will enable death to be cast out and life to come, in, to come in. This is what the Lord says. I have healed this water. Never again will it be caused death or make the land unproductive. When the living water starts flowing, the land becomes productive. And the, the, what grows in that land is purposeful and, and, and well for everyone around it. And the water has remained pure unto this day, according to the word of Elisha, the word Elisha has spoke. The woman is still operating in the natural. She says, when he asks her regarding the living water, you have no bucket. <laughs> you have no bucket. And the well is deep. She can't see what he's trying to say. So he presses in on her. Where is this living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you? She is starting to understand that Jesus is something different about the ordinary guy that asks for water. She is starting to understand something is different about this conversation with Jesus. But she is still uncertain. She says, Jacob fed his cattle from the well with his sons and himself. So she's starting to get an insight but she's still leaning on the very reality of it being a natural conversation. Jesus says to her, drink this water, that's from that well, drink this water and you will continue to be firm, you will continue to thirst. But drink the living water that I have given you, I will give you, you will never thirst again. And when the living water starts to flow into your life, it brings about a deliverance from un an unproductive life into a life that produces good things. She says, you will never thirst again. The thirst 
Jesus is talking about is the water that satisfies the body, soul and spirit. The body, soul and spirit. Ordinary water will satisfy your body, but the water that Jesus gives is a water that satisfies your body, your soul and your spirit. In life, we all have barking dogs raging in our minds, raging in our hearts, and raging in our bodies. Barking, barking, it's all about dogs this morning. Barking dogs, yapping away, asking us to meet their need or satisfy their whim. We have these barking dogs, and we have all learned to feed our barking dogs, often with just appeasement and suppression. And that's why many people turn to alcohol, many people turn to drugs, many people turn to sex, many people turn to adrenaline, many people turn to experiences. And it's an attempt to satisfy the barking dog that's yapping away, trying to get some reason and purpose out of the dissatisfaction of our lives. The soul, the body and the spirit is seeking in you satisfaction. They are seeking meaning to life. They are seeking relevance. They are seeking purpose. They are seeking security. They are seeking acceptance. They are seeking love. Each aspect of who you are is craving for the reality of those things to be met. And the attempts that we make to satisfy who we are can never really truly be met until we let the rock of salvation come into our lives. Unless we let the reality of who Jesus is and what Jesus done to transform that depth of loneliness and troubleness of soul. All these things that we seek were lost in the garden of Eden when the relationship with God broke down. Reconnecting to God will connect you to everything that God originally planned for you. God wants you to have all of these good things. And the disconnection from God made it so that you lost all of those things. But now we reconnect to God, we can reconnect to all of those things. He says to the woman, you will never be thirsty again. Christian, has that been your experience? To never thirst again in your spirit, soul and body? No? Why not? Jesus said it would. But what Jesus is saying but what he's not saying is you won't not have problems. He's not saying when you become a Christian, everything goes away. He's not saying that. He's saying that even in your problems, you will be satisfied. You will have meaning to life. You will have relevance to your life. You will have purpose to your life. You will have security for your life. You will have acceptance and you will know God's love even when you are facing Problems, when you connect, reconnect to God through Jesus, the rock. Because you are connected to the one who is able to deliver you from your problems, and if not deliver you from your problems, then sustain you while you're going through your problems. So those barking dogs will be managed if they're not delivered. God enables you to manage your problems if you pay attention to him, if you do what he says, if you do what he does. And Jesus is the perfect example for the reality of how to manage problems. He says you will know freedom no matter what happens to you in your life. In Romans 8, 35, 39 it says, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? He's asking you that question. Who will do it? And then he goes on, Paul goes on. Will tribulation or trouble 
or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Will they do it? But in all things, Paul says, in all things, we overwhelmingly conquer. Let's conquer all the problems. How we do it? Through him. Through who? Through Jesus who loved us. It says, for I am convinced, Paul says, for I am convinced that neither death, and what could go beyond death? But not even death, nor life. So life itself, nor angels, nor principalities, that's the heavenly beings, nor things present, that's problem, nor things to come, nor powers. Nothing, 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 Paul says, will be able to separate us from these things. No height, no depth, nor any created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is ours in Christ Jesus. So when you reconnect, and Jesus wants his woman to reconnect, just like I wanted that man to connect to God, everything changes. When the rock comes into your pool, Everything changes and God brings about transformation in all of the negative ripples that have gone on in your life. And he does it because he loves you and he wants you to know the blessing of the reality of what the victory took, what victory took place at the cross. So what does springing up into eternal life mean? It means this, Jesus is talking about our spirits, that's the spirit in us, rising up within us, rising up in our bellies and taking back control over our soul. I said before, our soul is our mind, our emotions and our will. So our spirit rises up and takes back control over our soul. That's our spirit that has been disconnected from God, which is now reconnected to God, God, in Jesus, equips us with the truth from God the Holy Spirit. He empowers in our spirits so that we can stop the barking dog. He gives us what we need to overcome. He enables us to deal with the issues as we let the Spirit in us be taught by the Holy Spirit to take back charge over our souls. We can enter the reality of eternal life beyond death now. We don't have to wait till we die to gain the victory over anything. We can gain the victory over everything now as we let God's Spirit, Holy Spirit, teach our spirit, equip us with the truth and then use that truth, which is his power, his word, to overcome the soul, that's the mind, the emotions and the will, and to teach them to act the way God wants them to, to act, how he intended for them to act in the beginning. The reality of eternal life experienced now, beginning now while we live on the earth. And he's trying to convey this to this woman. He wants her to get it, but she just can't get it until he declares those revelations. At last, the woman has connected to Jesus. She's on the same spiritual connection that Jesus is trying to communicate. So on the angle scale, she has moved from one to 10. I was in B&Q the other day. It was a long story, but Debbie wanted some cups hung up on a shelf. So I managed to get, I get myself a plan how I was going to do it. But the piece of wood that I needed, I went to three shops and couldn't find it. I ended up in B&Q. I went round there, I got myself a piece of wood, and I went to the shop to, to, to buy, make my purchase. And there was a woman there, and she was there. And she, I said, are you still open? She said, yes, she served me. But there was no barcode. Now, anyone knows that if you go to Big, there's no barcode, you have to wait forever for someone to sort out the barcode problem. So, I'm waiting forever. And while I'm waiting, 
I'm talking to the woman. Her name was Sandra. And I began to talk to Sandra. And Sandra said to me, she said, I said, I was talking about, uh, I, I don't know how I got into the conversation, but I started something. And I said to Sandra, she's, I said, I'm a pastor. And she said, I've been listening to a guy called Joel, yeah, over in Houston. See? So I said, oh, right. I said, he got, he's the pastor of my son in law's church, of my future son in law's church. <laughs> and uh, she, she said, uh, hopefully. Uh, they were probably listening. <laughs> anyway. Oh, right. So, <laughs> so I said, and he, he goes to his church. He's a really lovely guy. I said, he's got a really, uh, you know, kind of caring message. And she began, and then we got talking, and, uh, and then she started to ask me about Jesus. And we began, and she was so white, she was so ready, and she was so wanting, and God was already at work drawing her into this place. This woman had come from one, right up to ten at the well, and this woman that I met had come, and she was already waiting for the gospel to be proclaimed. The level that Jesus has tried to bring this woman to has now happened in the conversation. Jesus has captured her interest and she is on it. She has gotten down, as they say. She is hot on the case. The lights are truly switched on. She is interested. Interested in the message of the gospel. And God wants to teach each one of us to be those who take people from nowhere to somewhere. She says to the, the Lord Jesus, give me this water. Give me this gift of God. She knows what Jesus is offering now. And she wants it. And so she says, give me this water. Rob. Thank you, Jesus. Morning, morning all. Fantastic uh, to be here again, as always. I was just thinking, part of God, it's always times like this, times of difficulty and challenge and uh, within individuals, but certainly at the moment, collectively, all of us are in a kind of place that we don't really know. There's a, still a great deal of uncertainty. And it's exactly at times like this that people begin to look outside of themselves, feeling at the end of themselves and start looking to come somewhere. Father, we just thank you for opportunities like Paul's just had and, and help us, Lord, in these times to just meet people where they're at, Lord, and have the courage, give us the courage and the words uh, to help move on those conversations from where people are at to where they could be, to, 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 an under, to, to help to bring them to an understanding of you and all that you do. And, and just in, in this incredible change of heart that you give to us when we sincerely seek you in spirit and in truth. And we thank you that you are this living water that we hear about over these last couple of weeks. And it refreshes our spirit every day, all day, every day. Living water, refreshing our spirit. And not just our bodies and our soul, but our spirit and then if we've got a refreshed spirit, we can work with our, with our soul and we can begin through you to learn things that we just don't know in the natural. And I, I, I just thank you for that, Father. Yeah. And uh, the other thing I just wanted to, to, to say is the barking dogs, Lord. I know about them and I'm sure most people here do and people on Zoom, we all have our versions of what those barking dogs are yeah. in our lives. And Lord, we just thank you you give us that opportunity to silence them, yeah. to quieten them, and to learn through you to become humble yeah. in our nature, and that you are indeed this vaccine to overcome 
our sinful nature. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Just uh, unmute yourself if you wish to. Now say hi to those people on the Zoom and uh, we're about to go in the room. So bless you and I'll, uh, we'll see you uh, next week. Same time, same channel. Amen. <laughs>